ChatGPT have just relaunched two new models inside OpenAI. So you can see these right here by request. GPT 4.1 will be available directly inside ChatGPT starting today. So if you want to get access to this, you can go over to ChatGPT, like you can see right here. And then inside the model section, you'll see two different models here. So you've got GPT 4.1, which is great for coding and analysis, and also GPT 4.1, which is fast for everyday tasks. Now, actually inside the AI Success Lab, free link inside the comments description, you can get access to a hundred different use cases for using ChatGPT 4.1 plus a guide, which I'll come on to in a minute on exactly how to use this. But essentially, this is their brand new model, so 4.1. Now, it's very different to other models, and they actually have some benchmarks here. So you can see the benchmarks in terms of how it performs. It actually does outperform by quite a long way. And with this new model, which has just been brought to chat, you can see that was just announced on May the 14th. You can see basically the model has been used to help software engineers who are using ChatGPT to write or debug code, but also it's got a lot of other powerful models. Now, they've created a full prompting guide on it here, which is actually quite complicated, and I've actually broken it down into step-by-step -step pieces, which you can get inside the AI success lab, and I'll walk you through it in a second. But essentially, this is a very different model to what you'll typically get. So for example, one of the main things here is this is more agentic and it's better for agentic workflows, which means that if you ensure inside your prompts, when you're prompting it, that you have these prompt reminders to be persistent, this ensures that the model is going to understand and enter its multi-message turn and prevent it from prematurely yielding control back to the user. What does that mean? Essentially, if you go inside ChatGPT and you're using 4.1 for generating outputs, you can ask it to be more autonomous and to keep going until it's really giving you the outputs you want rather than giving up easily, which is awesome because it's a lot more autonomous. It's going to feel more like an agent. You're going to get better results with that. And it's really easy to set up step by step. So let me show you exactly what I mean and how to use this model and some of the best ways to get the most out of it. So for example, this is a more obedient and more capable model. So the best ways you're going to get outputs out of this are just by giving it very clear instructions, breaking down complex tasks into steps, and then guiding it like a high performing member. Now, one of the cool things about this model is it's actually quite good at data analysis. So for example, if we go inside here and we select more models and we go for the GPT 4.1, not GPT 4.1 mini, which I will come on to in a minute, but GPT 4.1. And then inside here, we can, for example, upload a spreadsheet that we want to analyze. So for example, if I upload this CSV here and I say to ChatGPT, okay, from here, mate, just start, analyze the deal velocity of how many sales we typically get, but more importantly, how fast those sales deals are closed, right? So. Let's say you want to analyze the spreadsheet. You've got your list of all the sales, all the contacts, all the people that closed with your sales team. And then you want to analyze, right, okay, over the last 100 or 200 deals, how fast are we closing them? Are we closing most clients within three days, five days, seven days, one day, et cetera, right? So that's what we're going to ask it to do. We're going to say analyze the deal velocity of how many sales we typically get. More importantly, how fast the sales deals are closed. And also break it down by percentage and give me some fun facts. and then make the report interesting and fun, right? For example, it can be quite good. And then for persistence, we can say, keep going until you've got everything you need. And then also inside the prompt here as well, you can say, you are an AI sales agent, right? AI sales operations agent. So we say you're a sales operations agent, analyze the deal velocity, make the report interesting, fun, keep going until you've got everything you need. So you see how we've told it it's an agentic agent right there. And also we've said, keep going until you get everything you need. Don't stop here. And then you can see we've actually got a bunch of tools here. So we've got deep research, create image, and also canvas, which I'll come on to in a minute. I'll explain that in a minute, right? So whilst we're waiting for that to load, we can do exactly the same thing, same prompt with chat GPT-4. So for example, if we take this prompt here and we use exactly the same process, and most people don't realize this, but if we upload, for example, the file of the CSV, which we've got right here, we're then going to upload that right there. Now, you might be wondering, okay, is this available in ChatGPT Plus? It is available in ChatGPT Plus. So you can get access. It's available inside there. So it's 
It's literally just come out like a couple of days ago, as you can see, this announcement was made on May the 15th. And you can also see here, it says, plus pro and team users will be able to access GPT 4.1 via the more models drop down in the model picker. Enterprise and edge users will get access in the coming weeks. And we're also introducing GPT 4.1 mini, which is awesome. And they've also explained some safety evaluations, which we can come on to in a minute as well, in terms of what you need to be careful of and that sort of thing. So you can see the breakdown here. Now, this is the breakdown from ChatGPT4, right? So if we have a look, exactly the same prompt, exactly the same data. And if we compare them side by side now, you can see that we actually get a much more in-depth example report from ChatGPT4.1. Not only that, but it also feels a lot more human. So it feels like an A player in your team. So for example, so here's how I'm going to break down the deal velocity for you. Here's the velocity report. It's analyzed it really nicely. Now, if we compare that side by side versus something like ChatGPT4, you're going to see the difference in outputs right here. So let's compare them side by side. So even the formatting of it just doesn't look as nice, right? This just looks a lot nicer. This is more like a report as an example. And here's the other thing that most people don't realize, right? So in this report, there was actually 188 leads, but for some reason, ChatGPT 4.0 gets totally confused and thinks it's got 848 leads, right? Which is totally wrong. So don't do your analysis with ChatGPT 4.0, my friends, especially now that you've got ChatGPT 4.1 inside the chat. It is a lot better analysis. It's going to give you better results and it's just a lot more accurate, right? There's less hallucinations. And also look at that. This is so sure. If we actually look at this report, we'll scroll down here. We're going to just check the word count there. So it only gave us 124 words in terms of the report. And that's on the old version of ChatGPT 4.0, which is what most people are still stuck using. Now, if we open up the report from ChatGPT 4.1, we'll scroll down here. We're just going to open this up and click on count words. You see it's three times as long, 312 words. It also explains what this means for you. So half your deals or leads close in one day. Three out of four deals close in a week. About one in four take a while, right? We've got the quick breakdown for analytics lovers here. So how many deals? and percentage of all closed deals. So for example, 32% of all our deals close within one day. And then also it explains like the percentage here. So it's like, right, close within seven days, 75%. And then 24% of your sales come after seven days. So the main thing here is it's a lot more interesting. It's a lot better, a lot more in detail. It's a lot more accurate. And most people don't even know about this update yet. So it's really good stuff, really cool. And then you can also switch to GPT 4.1 which is not as good for coding and analysis, but you will get better outputs for just everyday stuff, right? Now I've got a bunch of prompts. I actually got a hundred prompts inside the AI success lab. Link in the comments description if you want to get free access to all the instructions from today. And we'll come on to all those prompts and examples right here. Now, before we do that, I want to run you through, okay, what makes a good prompt inside ChatGPT 4.1 and how to get the most out of it, right? So for example, agentic prompts, you want to train GPT 4.1 to act like an assistant that owns the task from start to finish. So examples of what you should say in the chat. You're my assistant, keep solving the task until it's fully complete. Don't stop until you're done. Or if you're not sure about something, ask for explain what you need. Think before each step. That's an important thing. So inside chat GPT 4.1, you can trigger the reasoner mode just by saying, think this through carefully or analyze this, etc. Right? So for example, if we scroll up here, it did a lot. If we said, okay, Trigger reasoning mode to analyze more about my sales process and efficiency. And we'll just make sure we've got the right one there. And you can trigger it to think more, right? Now, it's got step by step thinking, which is chain of thought. So you can say, think through the step before giving your answer. And you just get better output. So you can see it's like taking a while to come back with the answers. If you want even deeper thinking, you can say, after each step, explain your logic. And then you get even deeper levels of reasoning inside the answers, right? So you can see here how you've gone from like a 300 word report to something that's a lot more in depth, a lot more thorough. And if we open that up, let's see how long that was. So that was 890 words in terms of the report. And we just get better insights, right? So if you want to get the most out of this model, it's down to you and how you use it. And this is how you use it, right? So for example, in this prompt to get the most out of it, what we said was after each step, explain your logic and what you do next. Plus we said, trigger the reasoning mode and think about it carefully. Right? What you wouldn't do is just tell me the answer. Like you, you'll just miss the magic of GPT 4.1's deeper reasoning. Now you could use something like chat GPT 03, 
but as powerful it is, as it is quite slow to respond, right? So for example, if we open these up, let's pull these up and we'll start a new chat inside each. So we've got GPT 4.1 here and we got GPT 4 hour over here. I'll just grab that prompt from before. We'll open up a new chat here. So we've got GPT 4.0 and we're we'll going to switch to 03. Upload the same CSV in both. And then we're going to use exactly the same prompt, right? And just compare them side by side. So 4.1 versus chat GPT 03. Both are reasonable models. Both are good for coding. But 03 typically tends to be a lot slower. So we've got exactly the same prompt. We gave chat GPT 03 the head start. You can see the analysis mode that it's using right here. And you can see how quickly it's coming back to us, right? So it's actually already given us the answer, whereas ChatGPT 03 is still thinking about the answer. It's still figuring it out, right? So you just get much faster responses with a similar level of quality from 4.1. And that's the big difference here is like 4.1 is just going to give you better results overall. It is an absolute game changer when it comes to AI, but most people don't even use it. And I think that update that just came out totally went under the radar for 99% of people. AY Television says, sup you cheeky geezer, been a while. I'm in my other account, what's up? Good to see you here. And as we keep going through, GPT 4.1. So you can actually use the memory as well, which is absolutely awesome, right? So you can add a memory and you can say, only use the context I provided, or you can say, use my previous responses here, etc. Inside the precise instruction following, you can give it exact rules on how to speak, or don't repeat the same more than twice, Avoid fluff, be direct. So you really want to be clear and direct with this model. If you don't, it no longer fills in the gaps. And that's going to hurt you if you don't understand that process properly. As you keep going through now, so prompt formatting tips. The more structure you add to this, the better it's going to be, right? So for example, add in the role, the objective, the instructions, and the tonality inside the prompt. And then fixing prompt failures as well. So, you know, if something's not working, you can actually ask it, like, are your instructions too vague? Did you forget to say what not to do? Are your expectations realistic? Like, those are questions you can ask yourself to debug any prompts that you're struggling with, right? So if you want to get better outputs, you can give better prompts. How do you give better prompts? Ask yourself these three questions. Now, if you do come across a prompt that's not really working properly when you're using GPT 4.1, you can add some examples. You can add new sentences. You can clarify with, if you're unsure, just ask me first. And that will just give you better responses as well. So overall, this is a really good formula. It's inside the AI success lab. Just go into the free course, go to chat GPT 4.1. This also comes with an awesome community. It's like a mini version of the AI profit border. And it gives you 10 times more value, weekly calls, coaching, DM support, much more serious entrepreneurs, right? Like not many serious entrepreneurs are inside the free group, but if you want to get a hundred prompt examples, the SAPs, et cetera then go inside the free group, link in the comments description, you can get all this stuff, right? So for example, let's take a example right here. So we, we could ask it a question like this, right? And then we can go inside chat GPT 4.1, which again is really good for thinking. So coding analysis, and we can say, okay, knowing what you know about me, right? Because it's got that memory, we can say, what's the 820 of improving client retention? And then it's given us specific pieces of advice based on my agency and what chat GPT remembers about me because it's got a memory section, right? And because it's using GPT 4.1, you're going to get much more like lifelike and well thought out responses, but you'll get them quicker than O3. So it's faster than O3. It gives you the same quality, but at the same time, it knows a lot more about you. And that's the other difference, say, versus using this in the API. If you use the API, which is also pretty good, 4.1 is it doesn't have the memory inside the API, whereas inside ChatGPT, obviously you've got all your memory features inside the customized section here. So if we go to customize ChatGPT, it will have all this information about you, who you are, what you do, previous notes you've given it, etc., and you can get better responses that way as well. So just overall, it's a much better model, a big upgrade. There's lots of cool stuff you can do with it, and it's a lot faster than any other reasoning models. Plus, you can trigger the reasoning model as well. You can see they just updated their May the 14th, 2025 safety evaluations hub because it is a powerful model. And I can see why they're introducing all these different responses. So you can compare the models here, the safety responses, etc. 
you can see that they just brought it in and it's available for plus pro and team users and then you can also switch here between everyday tasks right so if i went to faster for everyday tasks we start a new chat here gpt 4.1 mini will be better for stuff like for example okay give me some cool films i could watch today but knowing what you know about me right just something like more simple more direct quicker etc right and then it will just give you a bunch of ideas to be honest like <laughs> you know chat gpt it knows me so well like these top five films i could happily watch any of them if i had the time so in fact to be fair all of those 10 films i actually quite like yeah that's basically how it works how to set up how to use it etc you've got 100 free prompts and a full prompting analysis guide inside the AI success lab. And if you haven't already, check out the AI profit boardroom because AI profit boardroom is really, it's a total level up. Like you get a tiny little bit, a little glimpse of what's going on inside the free group. But if you want like the best stuff, then go inside here because, you know, it comes with weekly hot seat calls, Q and A's, you get direct access to me. You can DM me any questions that you want. It's an awesome community and see how active it is and how full of value it is as well. So there's lots of cool stuff going on in there. And also it comes with all of our best courses, agents, templates, workflows, etc. inside the Air Profit Boardroom. So feel free to get that link in the comments and the description, my friends.